type for resident and I did residency in New York before I moved here to Houston, Texas. Right now I'm working as hospitalist in Methodist Hospital in Houston. So I'm glad to see you here. And um, yeah, when you see many young faces, so I feel very like glad that you guys have a lot of opportunity to improve your English uh, much better than me when I started. Um, my English is far from perfect with a lot of accent. However, I still have, uh, I still able to communicate very efficiently with patients and their family. And I work very well with my colleagues. So that's why don't be worried about your English from beginning. As long as you try to practice and learn every day, you can improve and one day you can work here in US like me. Okay, so today my topic is dyspnea. So it's dyspnea, you know, guys, you guys know it's, it's a, like medical term of the shortness of breath, the symptom that we see very commonly in daily practice from the clinic, from the inpatient, from ER. So that's why when the patient, when we see the patient with dyspnea, it's very important with that we can have to handle the patient appropriately. So in order to do that, we need to have the, a lot of questions for the patient to figure out what's going on, right? So first of all, of course, in when you we see the patient, when we interact with the patient, the first thing we have to do is to introduce ourselves and like define the role of the patient care. So usually here, this is some of the example of how you introduce yourself. Usually in, in the US and every day when I see the patient, either in ER or, on the, or in medical floor, I always say hi to the patient first, right? Like, good morning, good morning, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> My name is Dr. Vu. I'm a doctor here, I'm taking care of you today. How are you doing? So that it very like, the sentence that I use every day. So that you can introduce, say hi to the patient, introduce how, you, what's the name, and then what's the role in the patient care. And then of course, you want to like confirm or you want to make sure that you see the right patient, right? By verify the name and the date of birth. You can see, if you say, hey, good morning, my name is Dr. Vu. I'm going to take care of you today. So can you tell me your name? Something like this, right? So it's very like natural way to introduce and then to confirm the patient's name. All right, so after introduce yourself, then of course you want to make a little bit more close to the patient. You said, you can there are a lot of the sentences you can use to make sure that the patient feels that you care about the patient. For example, if the patient comes in with shortness of breath, you can say, hey, you look like shortness of breath. Let me check the oxygen to see if you need oxygen. Or you can say, are you doing OK? Can you talk with me a little bit? I can be quick. Something like this, right? So in this case, you can, you can like um, to introduce and then to make the patient understand your role and then you are here to help them. So it is general, it, it, it happened to any patient you in, encounter. So make sure that it's very important because it's the first impression with the patient. So that's why in here in the US, they need to, when you practice, you need to be very like familiar with that and do like the way they're doing it. And then now you go directly, you go straight to the symptoms of the patient have, right? Uh, if the first time you, you meet the patient, you don't know what's going on, 
for example, you are the ER doctor, the patient coming in, and then of course you can ask them the open-ended question like, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? Or you said, oh, what's, what's the problem brought you to the ER today? So from there, the patient will tell you, hey doc, I'm so short in the breath or I couldn't breathe. So from there, you can start continue the, the conversation, right? And you can say, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you can say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I can see. So um, you can tell, and then the next you can ask them, okay, tell me more about that. So it's a very important or maybe a very simple way to ask the patient open-ended question. And the patient will tell you whole story or the patient tell you sometimes they tell you very like little information so that we need to ask more and more to 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 find out what really going on for example i asked what's the problem what brought you to the er today the patient said i'm showing the breath that's all they said then you can say oh tell me more about that and then say Oh, I have shown his breath for three days. It's getting worse, so that's why I came here. So that is the reply of the patient, right? So then the next step, you said, okay, you want to see how severe of the shortness of breath. And then you said, okay, um, you tell me, so do you need oxygen right now? Or let me check the oxygen to see if you need oxygen. And then before we can talk more. Something like this, you offer the care right away if the patient is short his breath. Because some pe people, they very like difficult. They even, why ask too many questions? I need oxygen now, something like this. So it makes you become the nervous. And then um, it's a make the conversation become like more, not like smoothly. Um, so then you ask about the, okay, more detail, like how long you have short his breath. So short is the breath getting worse or uh, it's getting better or it's the same for the last three days, right? Um, and then depend on what you think and what's the first impression about the condition, you can have the next question, if you next question to find out what's the cause of the shortness of breath. Of course, it is a differential diagnosis, right? If we went in the top of the head, if due to the respiratory issue, or it's due to cardiac issue, or it's due to the anemia, or it's due to the um, neurologic issue. So that's why it depends on the first impression, then you need to focus more about that first. For example, if the patient says that, a hey, doctor, if you shortness the breath, and then the patient cough, and then, of course, you think you may be due to the respiratory symptom. So we can, okay. Uh, so do you have any, of course, and now you need to ask about the associated symptom, right? For example, if the patient cough, the patient wheezing, the patient have a chest pain or not, the patient have fever. So you can ask, do you have any cough? They said, yes, I have a lot of cough. So then he said, okay, it is dry cough of the productive cough. Or you did you cough up with any like any come up when you cough, any sputum or maybe any flame? They said, yeah, I cough up a lot of flame. So you follow up, you follow up like that flow, right? And we ask more, okay, what's the color of the flame? They said, yeah, it's yellow. So then you want to ask, okay, any fever? They said, yes, a lot of fever. I have high fever. I have to take Tylenol. So it's a question, flow of question. It depends on the flow of conversation. So it not have any like common formula here. But in general, you want to ask, first of all, you ask what's the main symptom, right? Sean is a bad. When it started, it getting it is how it progressed and associated symptom like wheezing, cough, chest pain. If you think the patient shot is bad due to the heart failure, so then you can ask about the, do you have any heart problem before, any chest pain, do you see any like swelling in the leg, right? It's a symptom, the heart failure, 
or if you think it might be due to the anemia, you can ask about the bleeding symptom like GI bleed or maybe the patient has hematuria. If you think the patient may be overload on the patient with um, uh, hemodialysis, of course, you can ask when the last time you have no hemodialysis. So it's an associated symptom. You need to ask it depend on the impression and also of course you want to have the differential diagnosis list. So that is we need to when of course with the medical knowledge we can know what you need to ask, right? And of course you want to ask about like trigger or maybe like the what what the initiated the, the shortness spread. For example, if the patient has an asthma, you want to ask about okay we got I smell a very strong perfume and then I feel short is bad and wheezing so it we can know that about the like trigger factor and then you can see which factor we what makes the patient have like getting worse for example if patient has heart failure the patient said that or when I yeah I, I stay up the when I go up to the stair go to floor I feel very short is breath or when I walk I feel short is breath so all of the question you need to ask. Of course, it is it not like the medical lecture, so I don't want to mention in detail, but then with the medical knowledge you have, you will know the question you need to ask. Yeah, so I mean, this one is also the same layer that I, I already talked. You want to say, you can ask the patient, like short is bread come of sudden, or is like getting worse, in last several days, uh, it so we can know it about the acute or the chronic problem, right? Okay, and then here it I mean yeah I, I included in this slide about the how severe of the of the dyspnea. You have the grade from zero to four, so we can read here in 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 slide that um you can see the shortness spread it only happened when with the exercise with the exertion or it only happened when the patient is in, in at rest so we can know how severe of the dyspnea so this one is more detail or is it more deep in about the like management so when you you, you determine how severe is the dyspnea well and then is this slide the same thing yeah like i said it also is the AXO talk about the associate symptom that we need to ask. So about the, yeah, if you think the patient has lung problem, you should focus more about that, about the cough, about the chest pain, about the, if you think about patient have like pulmonary embolism, for example, you want to think about the, like, the, um, uh, yeah, the chest pain and also another factor like patient have a long travel or we when we do physical exam we can find the some like swelling in the leg like DVT something like this. So it it we call the associative symptom right when the dyspnea. So bottom line is that when the patient come in with the shortness of breath, of course we need to ask about when shortness of breath started. It's a cue on it chronic, right? How severe of shortness needs a breath, right? And then the next step, in order to have a differential diagnosis list, you need to ask the associated symptom. So bottom line, it is a how we 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 uh, interview the patient with the shortness needs a breath symptom. And then of course the next step is. We need to ask about the medical history, right? We got medical history. We also give us any suggestion about what's going on with the patient and also confirm of the thinking. For example, if the, you need to ask the patient, do you have any asthma? Do you have a COPD? Or do you have any lung problem in the past? Something like that. If the patient said, oh yeah, I have the lung, I smoke a lot, and then I have a COPD and I have use oxygen at home. Something like this, so you know, okay, so patient may be COPD exacerbation, right? And also, you need to ask about the hospitalization before, any surgery before, 
question yes i have the lung cancer in the past i have to one part of my lung it removed five years ago so you can have idea of oh, the patient have very small lung in this case we need to to, to consider it into diagnosis and then to evaluation of the patient and of course you want to ask about the like cardiac history if the patient have heart attack in the past or patient had heart failure person oh yes i have the surgery i have the like heart attack and have i have the like cabbage surgery a few years ago so you said oh maybe the patient have the heart failure related right and then of course another gi symptom the patient have i have the bleeding in stomach long time ago and then look like i have another bleeding right now so it can like suggest you some different diagnosis with the medical history so that's why medical history is also very important not for this patient and of course in any patient we we will see in daily and you don't forget to ask about the medication patient take right you want to ask the patient um, okay so did you take any medication for shortly spread for example, if the patient has asthma, they said, oh, yes, I have a lot, I use a lot of inhaler at home. I use a nebulizer as well, but it didn't help. So then you may think, oh, maybe shortly spread, but you choose asthma attack, it may be, may, may be dangerous because the patient already took a lot of medication at home. So we need to, to be careful about that as well. And then allergy, yet of course, allergy is also important, especially the patient when the patient with the like asthma related shortness of breath. So that's why the allergy history is also important. Allergy to the medication, allergy to the chemistry, to the food, or, or anything. So you need to ask about that as well. And then you also need to ask about the social history right social history is also important when with the patient we mean with shortness of breath especially it like smoking history of course you know that right if the patient with smoking for a long time so then copd is also in the top of the list of diagnosis so that's why we need to ask about as a smoking so here in the us we ask about the pack a year right you can ask the head like do you smoke? Well, you simple question. Do you smoke? I said yes, I smoke, right? And then of course you ask how, how many cigarettes a day, how long? That all the question we need to ask. Or maybe they said oh I I I, I smoke but then I only quit. And then they said oh good good, you quit smoking but then when did you quit? So oh I quit long time ago. So it also important information when you wanted to know when you ask about the smoking history. And of course about alcohol and also about the illicit drug, you also want to ask as well. Okay. And also one more important about the social history is about the occupation and uh, observation. For example, uh, because some people, they, they, they work into industry, they explore with a lot of the like the, the, um, the chemical or they expose to the some the some substance that can harm to the lungs so can cause an intestinal lung disease or something like this so we want to ask about the occupation of the patient as well so it's also important so here yeah i think in the slide here i listed and then uh, some like the question or some example questions you may want to ask sometimes we are in in the real life usually we use more like simple and short questions rather than uh, the question I, I i i wrote here but then well if, if you can pick and lastly I think it's important to ask about the travel history as well, especially it's the last year, right? Last two years when we have the like COVID 
Of course, it's the travel history is very important, right? Because when we go to the pandemic area, to the another area, so that's why when the person comes in, shortness of breath, fever, it's a like flu-like symptom. It's the first everyone want to ask about the COVID history, right? So that's why it's about the travel history is so important. However, I think the travel history is also important for the sometimes the patient it have a long trip uh, from uh, country to country from the long flight so can mean which shot is the breath and the swelling like so then the first thing you need to see oh if the patient has a pulmonary embolism or not so that is also it is uh, information it also important in some some cases as well and then yeah of course you want to ask about the potential exposure to respiratory uh, infection or environment toxic. For example, if the patient come, come from the, um, the fire, right? They have a fire in the house. He have inhaled a lot of smoke. So the patient can be in with the smoke, like inhaler. So that can make the patient short his breath. So this guy is also very like, it's the immersion cases that we need to, 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 to be attention about that. So that is about the trouble history and exposure history. And lastly, but it less important in here when the patient comes short his breath, it, you want to ask about the family history. Uh, of course, family history is important in some other problem, other issue, but they're not so important in here in short his breath. But then, yeah, it can take you in one sentence and you ask, okay, anyone in the family have the heart problem or lung problem, something like this. So they sometimes they can they, they can tell you, especially like asthma. I said, oh, my 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 mom have asthma and also I have asthma too. So it is for the family history, but then it's not so important with the patient with the business. So I think it's for the history, it I think um. It is basically, it is all covered when you encounter with patient with shortness of breath. Usually in the like real life, when we have to interact with the patient with shortness of breath, either in ER or in the medical floor, usually it takes about five to 10 minutes to ask the questions. And then about five minutes to do physical exam. So total like 10 to 15 minutes. Then you, you will most of the time, you will know what's going on with the patient. So then from then, from there, we will like develop the, the diagnosis uh, plan, either order the lab, order the imaging, or order the treatment right away. So that is the, um, I think it's the first part of my presentation today regarding about the, Dyspnea. So that is um, actually I talk in like the like, like flow that I interact with the person every day. So it is a real experience and it not really like follow any structure in, 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 in the lecture right now today. But then uh, I think it is um, this is the way we are doing when we see the real patient. So if you guys have any question, any concern or anything, let me know. You can interact right now. So uh... Hello, thank you, Dr. Duc Vu. Maybe you yeah. share a screen so you can see everybody there and uh, people yeah. can ask questions before they sign into the breakout rooms. Thank yes. you. And before that, I would like to remind four of you, because uh, most of you very good to do the put the ID number before the name, but only four people still at that time still not do that. And I'm so tired of those people. Okay, please fix it right now. Thank you. So, um. Let me go ahead and share my screen for a couple of announcements. Uh, how can I how can exit my share? Uh, oh, it's okay. I can just do it. Okay. Okay. 
Um, should I? Okay, terrific. Um, when I, I wanted to make uh, two announcements is when we go into the breakout rooms, the exercise will be designed into two parts. The first part will be listening comprehension. We've all done that before. The TAs will read a passage. You can ask them to read it two times, three times, that would be fine. And then there will be some um, questions to make sure that you understood um, what the TAs read. And then the second part will be you, the doctors, taking a history, a medically relevant history. If someone has asthma, for example, then you can ask questions regarding how often do you use your inhaler, okay? And then the second announcement I had for today was we have um, new breakout rooms, meaning um, we'll have different um, TAs and different learners. Uh, it's been requested that we try uh, listening to someone else's English. So I wanted to accommodate the request. Um, and then a reminder um, on how to get to the breakout room. So there's a breakout room section uh, button. And if you wanna leave the breakout room, there's one on the far right of your screen. Um, and then these are the, um, the assignments for today. And I know some people are out because of work or vacation. Um, we may do some shuffling of the rooms once we get into the rooms, but uh, these will be the assignments. So some things are the same, some things are different because we have um, TAs um, in different rooms. Okay, I believe the rooms should be open. And, you know, we'll give everyone maybe three minutes, take a break, and then go into your rooms. So um, the room should be open. So I um, invite you to go into the rooms whenever you're ready, but expect that the TAs um, may still be on break. And everyone can take a break. Okay, you can go to coffee and go to the washroom or do <laughs> anything else. Yeah, but don't forget to remember your room. Yeah. So every day, uh, every lesson, the student go into the same room, right? The students uh, go into the same rooms. Um, sometimes the TAs move around. Okay, I see. It's easier for us to move TAs than to move students. Okay, so in name ID, right? So based on the ID number. So they from like, for example, from one to 19, they go to room one, for example, right? Yes. Uh, okay, I see. And uh, and Dipu, you can yes. go to any of the breakout room to have a look at it. Yeah, okay. Yes. So yes, the last time I tried. Yeah, <laughs> yeah to uh, look we, at we have, I can break, breakout room and after that, mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have some observers, instructors. Do we say how long the breaks will be? Five minutes? Um, yeah. I want to make sure it's not like 30 minutes break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I feel better. I feel reassured when Gonzalo's back. Gonzalo, we have been big now, but welcome back, Kiki Gonzalo. <laughs> So I think it's a good idea that you can go, uh, all the students, you can go to the breakout room now. You can make uh, 
friends or do something else before uh, in waiting for the TA coming. Okay. Maybe you could introduce yourself because it's a new group. Mm -hmm. TA has mm -hmm. not worked with each other even. So maybe that's good. Start the rapport, start talking to everybody. Uh, let me, I could uh, put a broadcast. I, I don't know how to make, are you co-host yet? I don't know how to make you co-host. I am, I am for I, some reason. I did. I did. Okay. <laughs> let me broadcast to the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like TAs, please introduce yourselves to new group. Yeah. Or everybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> They don't need to introduce uh, introduce themselves because uh, people know right away. But it's all right. <laughs> just uh, as you're making joking. <laughs> so the bad news is that uh, Dr. Mindo is uh, cannot make it today, so I have to stay with you. Even I am very reluctant to do that, but. <laughs> Do you usually and and mm -hmm. do you take a group? No, you don't, right? No, I don't. But I just um, mm -hmm. uh, just go from this one room to another one. Just uh, look around to see that what atmosphere there and how people. Hey, Stacy, hang on, Stacy, you're in a new group today. Room nine. We're just shuffling people. Yeah, just to keep people, you know. Hey, Jennifer. Okay, sorry, I'm a little late. <laughs> That's okay, oh. room 10, honey. Okay, thank you. Should we assign people? Um, let's see, 96 is room 10. Everybody want room one. Oh. Five. Helen, how did you recruit a lot of the medical students helping us? Oh, it was all Quinzhou. Oh, Quinzhou. Because <laughs> wow. I teach the medical school. <laughs> oh, medical school. <laughs> I want to say I recruit them mm. afterwards, so there's no threats. Mm. After, after I teach, so there's no there's no threats of me failing them if they don't volunteer. Uh, <laughs> that was very yeah. convincing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I heard that you just make a trip from Vietnam back and I'm surprised at that because you don't have any suntan. It's very hot and very sunny. Eh? Oh, it's very <laughs> hot. It's so hot that you try to avoid the sun. Guizhou, uh, can you, <laughs> you um, move people? Yes. I feel um, I, I I don't know if there's a room assignment where yeah, I there is. Well, actually, you see the screen? Right here. Yep. Yeah, oh, the my bad. <laughs> Sorry. See, we're, we're shuffling people. No, don't worry. Just uh, introduce yourself when you get there because you may have you're you may be with a different different TA. Uh huh. Yeah. Different. Sorry. So it's a, yeah, I was a little late. I didn't see the assignment thing. All right. Thank you. You four. Skedaddle. Uh, Quinzel, can I you can, help um, Learner One Hundred and Five? I already invited, and I couldn't do that anymore. See, um, Learner 105 is in room five, which has already been invited. Hmm. Maybe five. they're on two devices. Hello. Hello, hi, hi, Van. Can you go to room five? Hey, Kevin, you're in room nine. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all mm -hmm. people gone. <laughs> oh, and someone's back. Mm -hmm. is a room. Laura just, uh, has Laura has a big group. Um, 